I'm moving, moving forward every day. Jesus, I just let him lead the way every second. So close and yet so far. So it pleased the king to send me and I set him a time. And I said unto the king, oh boy, I love this Bible. The king, I said to the king, I want letters given to me so I will give to the governors over the river. Because when I'm going, I need protection. So that when I leave, I need to give the governor's letters so let them know from you, protect this man. And a letter to Asaf, the keeper of the king's forest. I have to go by Bhagwan Singh and get lumber. I want a credit note from you. Come on, people. I need some, some blank checks to get lumber to build. And the king gave him the checkbook. You in church tonight? Yeah. Are you seeing the pit here? Yeah. On, every, on every angle, the, the Medo Persian kingdom working with the kingdom of God. Go back and build Jerusalem. Esther is queen. Come on, Mordecai is governor. Nehemiah asked for wood to go back and build, and all of that. The king said, Okay, take as long as you want. Go and build it. The Medo Persian kingdom played a key role in the life of the Jewish people. But more than this, Jehovah gave the Medo-Persians the glorious opportunity to know God and to unite with God. They knew enough to embrace the message of salvation, people. They knew enough to be partakers with the Jews in spreading the gospel. They knew enough the scriptures show God was working to draw them into the economy of, of, of Judaism and to make them co-laborers and co-inheritors with the Jews. They were the perfect place to build up God's kingdom. They were the superpower. They were the perfect place to build up the kingdom. They could have easily become part of the community of Israel. They believed in one God. Daniel was advisor to Darius. Esther was queen on the throne. Nehemiah worked with king Artaxerxes. And Mordecai was governor. They were at the right place to join with Jerusalem. Are you with me tonight? Watch all the, all the information is there. The queen Esther will work on her husband to be in the kingdom. Mordecai would work with his people to be in the kingdom. Nehemiah would work with the king about the kingdom. All through Medo Persia, you had people becoming Jews, and God is working with them to join with Jerusalem. Push the gospel. So close. Yet so far. About history. Is brutal. The Bible says, and history records that the Major Persian kingdom began to decline. They lost focus. And when Xerxes won in 480, he set out to invade Greece. Instead of the Medo Persians taking the opportunity, to join with the Jews to expand the kingdom of God. Xerxes wrapped up with expanding his earthly kingdom. You with me in church tonight? Xerxes lost focus and thinking about earthly kingdom. 
He wants to expand his kingdom. So he started to attack Greece. He forgot that Jehovah is setting up an eternal kingdom. Took his eyes off of it and he started to marshal his people to take Greece. And the Bible says, and history records, that it would change. Because when Xerxes went to attack Greece, he lost the battle. You can't win any battle when you don't have God fighting with you. Kingdom of God was at the doorsteps of Medo-Persia. But they didn't appreciate the blessing. And like Babylon, just a matter of time before Medo-Persia would come tumbling down. Daniel chapter 8, we get the insight into it in the third year. In the third year of, of the reign of Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me. He saw it beforehand. Well, I need to let you know that Daniel chapter 6 is followed by Daniel chapter 7. But if we go to Daniel chapter 7, we would skip the connection. So we have to go to 8 and then come back to 7. Because 8 is critical. In the third year of the reign of Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me. Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at first, then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood a ram which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher one came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, and no beast could stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will, and he magnified himself. And as I was considering, behold, a he goat came from the west out of the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. He came to the ram that had two horns and ran upon him in the fury of his power. And I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with anger against the ram, and he smote the ram and break his two horns. There was no power, verse 7, in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground, trampled upon him, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. I heard a man's voice which called and said, Gabriel, make this man, Daniel, to understand the vision. And he said, the ram that you saw, that had the two horns, they are the kings of Medo-Persia. And the rough he goat is the king of Greece. You see the pitya? Can you see the pitya? On October 1st, 331, Alexander the Great, his army defeated the Persian army, led by Darius III at the Battle of Gorgamela to complete the conquest of the mighty Persian Empire. So close. And yet, so far. Why did this happen, people? Why? Darius, king, knows Daniel. Cyrus, rebuilding the temple. Artaxerxes knows Nehemiah. Artaxerxes knows, and he has a wife who is a queen, a Jew. All are wrong. Jews converting Medo Persians all around. They have everything in their hand to unite with Jerusalem. How could Persia fall? Why? Because just like Belshazzar, he did not consider the way God humbled his father for his arrogance. And Belshazzar disrespected God by using the vessels of the house of God in the same way the Persian king Xerxes forgot about the way of God. He forgot that God was using Cyrus. He forgot that God was trying to convert this nation. The same way Belshazzar forgot God. The same way Xerxes forgot God. And instead of advancing God's kingdom, Xerxes advancing the Medo-Persian kingdom. Are you in church tonight? Xerxes focused 
on building worldly kingdom when God was working with them to build his eternal kingdom. The Medo-Persian people were so close, but yet so far. So close, but yet so far. You know why Medo-Persian kingdom fell? Because they lost focus. The king lost focus. And instead of leading the people in the way of God, he's leading them to continue to build his kingdom. Church, wake up tonight. They could have easily joined the community. They, they believe in monotheism. They were ripe. God placed Jews in high position. Daniel had a relationship with Darius, Esther's queen. Mordecai is governor. Nehemiah worked with Artaxerxes. Everything was in place to expand the kingdom, but they missed it. They missed it. Why? Because when God is trying to get the Medes and the Persians to join and go with the Jews, they turn and they focus in somewhere else. So close. Uh, yet so far, uh, there's a quiet night in the house of God tonight. Quiet night in the house. That's why they fell. If they had stayed with God, if they had worked along with the Jews, if they had marshaled the kingdom of God, nobody could stop them. Nobody could stop them. When Jerusalem, when the Jews under, the, under the, the 12 tribes, when they were the Israelites in the wilderness, they were shepherds. They came out. You know what they were doing in Egypt? They were mining. They were living in Goshen, taking care of sheep and goats, and they were making bricks. Listen to me, somebody. The Jews came out, or the Israelites rather, came out of Egypt. All they knew how to do was care for animals, agriculture, and make bricks. But when they got out on the field and a, a nation came up against them, when they were with Jehovah, they beat anybody. Shepherds and bricklayers beat anybody with Jehovah. It's not your skill. It's your God. Are you with me? Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. It wasn't the army, but God. And Middle Persia had an army. And they had God. So close. So far. They missed out. Studying earthly gain. Expand the kingdom. More territory. And they went one step too far interfered with Greece. And when they went out after Greece and not building God's kingdom, they went out without God's protection. They ventured out there, not on God's business, but on their own business. And the business turned around and bust. Talk to me, somebody. This series is called Prophetic Trends. Insights. From the diary of Daniel. Insights. I thank God for opening my eyes to connect all those dots. God said, look how I'm working here. Daniel and Darius. Look how I'm working here with Nehemiah. Here, look how I'm working here with Esther. Look how I'm working here with Mordecai. Look how I'm working here. A building, a building, uh, uh, Middle Persia. Transforming Middle Persia. Uh, Cyrus is my servant building my temple. Artaxerxes is sending lumber to build Israel. I am expanding my kingdom from Middle Persia all the way to Jerusalem. All of that territory is mine. My kingdom is expanding. And why the Jews over there building back the temple of God and God's work being reconstructed? Persia left. Persia abandoned ranks trying to build territory. And Greece 
took them out. Prophetic trends, insights. We're learning insights. Insights. Tonight, I tell somebody, you and I stand like the Medes and the Persians. Ah, we, we can know about God's plan. And we can join in and advance the kingdom. Or we could still go and try to continue building our own kingdom. Talk to me, somebody. Insights. That's what we're getting. God is saying, uh, in this prophetic series, you are exposed to the kingdom. You can join in and expand the kingdom. Or you can go about still trying to build your own kingdom. But the record shows that just as Medo-Persia fell, your kingdom will fall. Just as Medo-Persia fell, your kingdom will fall. You see, because salvation is not how close you are. Salvation is not about how close you are to the truth. Salvation is not about how close you are to God's kingdom. Salvation has nothing to do with that. Salvation is not about being close. It's about being in. You're not saved being close to the kingdom. We could be as kind as Darius was to Daniel. We could marry a believer. Like King Artaxerxes married Esther. You could have a believer working in your compound. Like you have a Mordecai or a Nehemiah. You could be close. A closeness is not good enough. That's the message of the Middle Persians. Very close. But yet, so far. So this Friday night, somebody need to hear me. Don't be like the Medes and the Persians. This is Bible study. I am preaching. I'm opening up your eyes to something in the scripture. Don't be like the Medes and the Persians tonight. So close, but yet so far. Pray for me, Roy. Pray for me, my brother. We don't get credit. God doesn't give us credit because we're close to the kingdom. We don't get credit. Because we know about the kingdom. We don't get a pass because we know somebody in the kingdom. Salvation is not by proximity. You're not saved by proximity. God doesn't want proximity. God wants precision. Not proximity, not closeness. But connectedness. The Middle Persian kingdom found that out. Salvation is not based on how close you are to the truth. It's how close you are to the Lord. To be saved, you don't have to be close to the truth. You have to accept it. Listen, somebody on the platform, to be, to be saved, you, you don't have to be close. You have to accept. And thank God the Bible tells us that all was not lost in Middle Persia. God always has a few. <laughs> Pastor, God, God, God is the ultimate. God always finds fruit. When Middle Persia went off course and left the charter, God still had a few. My Bible says, Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, somebody, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, God always has a few. When he was born in the days of Herod, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem saying, where is he that is born? Let me preach now. Where is he that is born, king of the Jews? For we have seen his star. God always has a few. When, when Medo-Persia left the course, God had a few. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wise men from the east. Yes. They still held on. Eventually some in Persia held on to the faith of the Jews. Let me tell somebody tonight. There were people in Persia who still studied the scripture. Yeah. The words wise men. Word wise men is translated from the Greek 
Magai, which was a term that was referred to a Persian priest class. Hallelujah. There were a priestly group in Persia. They were called Magai. And the Bible historian writing tells us they believed in following the stars. They believed that the stars talked about God. Hallelujah. So when they saw a star, they connected it to the text. A star shall come out of Jacob. Hallelujah. And these Persians held on to the scriptures. God still has a few. They followed. They said, King, you could go and follow land. We will follow God. They were there and they were reading the scriptures, looking into the heavens. And they saw some stars as planets that were speaking about God. And these Persians left Persia from the east. Hallelujah. And they got in their caravan and they were following the star. They were following when, when Darius was there, had some following. When Nehemiah was there, there was some following. When Daniel was there, they had some following. When, when Artaxerxes was there, they had some following. And when Persia went down and Greece took over, they still had some following. Even though they were quiet, even though they were hiding, they were following. And at the right time, when the Lord came to set up his kingdom, they were still following, left Persia. Hmm. Talk about God left Persia. They were searching and they never stopped searching. You don't have to be like the people in Medo Persia who fell because they were concerned with building the earthly kingdom. You don't have to end up with a statement over your life so close but yet so far to see truth to hear truth to see that God is building up his kingdom and every earthly kingdom shall fall to see all of this to be so close and still be far you don't have to end up like these Persians who fell away, you could be like the wise men who kept their eyes on God's kingdom, left Persia in search for the Lord. They searched for God so intensely that they arrived in Bethlehem looking for Jesus and the people in Jerusalem didn't even know that Jesus was born. They got Persians whose eyes are open clearer than Jews. Where is he? You don't have to be living under the statement so close. Yet so far, like Persia, you could be under the banner of God. Not close, but inside the kingdom. God put so much things in place to transform the Persian kingdom. But they were focusing on earthly things. And when you focus on earthly things, earthly things will fall. But when you focus on heavenly things, you will stand forever. That's the message of Persia, the fall of Persia. They were so close, yet so far. And there are people following the series. God said the kingdoms will rise, Babylon the head of gold, and after that will be silver, Medo Persia, and after that will be another kingdom, and after that another kingdom. Yeah. You're seeing it before your eyes. You're seeing it right before your eyes. Playing out in this series. And you're looking and God is calling you to make a decision. And you could walk away and say, 
What the Bible says is amazing. The prophecy is true. How could they be so foolish? How could Nebuchadnezzar be so stubborn? How could the Medo Persians do that? You can see all of that. Come so close. And then when it's time for your decision, you end up so far. You see, we, we in the Medo Persian kingdom tonight, not only in the text, but in the building. We are in the Middle Persian kingdom. And you are being called to make a decision. Either to continue on in the kingdom with God. Or to do like Xerxes and still go and try to build your earthly kingdom. But know for surety, every earthly kingdom will come down. Your best plans will fail. Your brightest ideas will crumble. Your greatest achievements will collapse one day. Only those who stand with Jesus will stay forever. Don't be so close and still remain so far. So tonight I'm asking you to make a decision. Again, every night you make a decision. Get into the eternal kingdom. Don't go, don't go running after building your kingdom. It won't last. Get in the eternal kingdom with Jesus. So if you're in this building and you need to make a decision, make that decision tonight. Make that decision. Look, 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 look how much they had. And it slipped out. Slipped out. Like, 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 like um, um, Judas. Sit down there. Judas had Jesus. S Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords, the wealth of the universe he had slipped out for 30 pieces of silver. So close. So far. It's a thinking message tonight. Medes and the Persians, raised up by God, but left God. What are you going to do with your life tonight? That's the question. What are you going to do with your life? Walk along with Jesus, continue following the star into eternity, or walk away and try to continue building something that will not last. My prayer for you tonight, my friend, is that you do the wise thing and walk with Jesus. And if you're online and you want to go and pull up that statement, pull out an, an, a, a, a document, and make that decision tonight. If you're in the building, make that decision tonight. And I'm asking you, if you came in here tonight and you want to say, I don't want to be like those Medes and Persians so close, but end up so far. I will make a decision for Jesus. Why don't you raise your hand to heaven? Raise your hand to heaven. Pastor, I understand that we have some people who have already decided they want to be baptized. People, would you say amen? People have been making decisions. And if you're on the platform Friend of mine, you are, you are viewing online and you want to make a decision for the Lord. Just sign in there. I want to be baptized. I will make a decision for the Lord. Just put it in and we will lead you on from there. Okay? We will lead you on from there. Put it in, make contact, and we will take it on from there. And if you want to make a decision to give your heart to the Lord and get into the kingdom, pastor is here, the elders are here, I am here, speak with somebody, and we will take it from there. But please, don't come to this series, don't look, read the Bible, don't see all of that information, and come so close, and then walk away, and your life end up so far. God bless us. Tonight we pray. Let this message sink in, into our souls. And may we make the right decision, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.